the Irish Rovers are in New Zealand. You know, or maybe you don't, the guys who sing the Unicorn song. Yes, indeed. Uh, lead singer George Miller. He wanted to go to Hobbiton, as you do. It was a very good place to uh, find a unicorn, apparently. So Tim Wilson went along. And the lovely Irish guy walks into a movie theme park in New Zealand. Not just any Irish guy, George Miller, a musician who helped make this song famous. Some cats and rats and elephants, the sure is your ball. The loveliest of all was the unicorn. Hobbiton seems like the right place for a unicorn fan. Will you just listen? I'm trying to tell you there is something else out there. But rather than hobbits, musician meets journalist. Hello, George. Oh, Tim, how are you? As is common in such tales, they begin an unfeasible quest. Shall we see if we can have a look for yes. a unicorn? We'll look for unicorns. OK. Look under bushes. They could be anywhere. Meanwhile, the musician tells the journalist about that song. There was no drums, there was no keyboards, there was no strings. He had eight tracks and a simple little song, and it just slipped into the charts, and we've been writing its little back ever since, for 50 years now. How many languages have you sung the song in? Well, when I'm drinking Guinness, probably 18 or 19. Uh, when I'm sober, just one. Back at the Shire, look. Look, they try unicorn spotting glasses. See if these work. Mm -mm. Funny little backstory about unicorns. In the Middle Ages, they were fearsome creatures that people killed. But then they got nice. The Irish musician likes nice. I'm definitely more whimsical the older I get. Foolishly, the journalist suggests some magic wand. No, maybe we'll just go and have a drink. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah, let's go. But just as the quest is abandoned, you're never going to see no you. 